So here's a charge controller I snagged off Amazon. It's used to uh, charge a lead acid battery from a solar panel input. Uh, it caught my eye because it was super cheap, so I couldn't resist buying it. Um, the uh, labels, if you're looking closely, are all crooked. It's my first indication. I bet the uh, design and manufacturing is probably pretty special inside. So here we are looking straight down onto the circuit board that was in the plastic enclosure. Let's just orient ourselves. There's some leads on the uh, right-hand side and some circuitry on the left. On the top there, that's the leads that go to the solar panel and the leads on the bottom go to the battery. Uh, we'll tear down the topology a bit in a second, but uh, let's take a look first at some of the workmanship and design choices they've made. Uh, the first one is if I flip it over and I can look at the leads that go in for the battery and solar panel, they solder into the board directly. And uh, unfortunately, they don't have any uh, thermal release on the uh, planes. They're quite large planes. And you can see the soldering gets very lumpy because their irons weren't capable of melting the solder fully. Um, the strange thing is, of course, that could be solved quite easily by doing something called thermal relieving and uh, providing uh, the ability to warm up a pad uh, without having the planes draw the heat away. It would look kind of like I show there. Uh, next up are some jumpers on the board. Uh, if I measure them with a caliper, you can see they're 0.3 millimeters in diameter. That's equivalent to about 28 gauge, and the uh, tables tell me it's good for about 1.2 amps. Uh, problematically, if I backlight the board here, you can see that the solar panel goes through one of the jumpers. And on the box, it claimed it's good for 8 amps. Uh, so obviously a pretty significant discrepancy between the gauge of the wire and the current carrying capability claimed by the product. I suspect those might get pretty hot. Uh, while we're on the topic, look at F1 here. A fuse, uh, of course, uh, obviously not a fuse there, but just a chunk of wire. So uh, uh, obviously there's a bit of scrimping on that. Unfortunately, an undersized wire isn't a really great fuse because it won't reliably break uh, in a location that you'd hope for. So uh, not a great and strong design technique. So looking at these three diodes, they're all in parallel. They're the reverse biasing diodes. Uh, when the sun goes down, the panel, of course, won't produce electricity. And the purpose of these uh, diodes is to prevent the battery from being discharged. Uh, that's fine, but if you look at the holes that uh, the leads are going through, they look quite large. And if we take a side view here, you can see what's happened uh, during the waste soldering. The solder has actually pushed up through the hole and is creating those little formations. Uh, unfortunately, they have a tendency to break off, and of course, that would eventually short their uh, assembly out. Um, a real unnecessary problem here, of course, just sizing the holes correctly on an assembly would have prevented this. Again, uh, sort of a zero dollar effort required to actually produce a higher quality assembly. Um, the MOSFET up on the metal heat sink, just taking a look on the side, you can see uh, they form the leads extremely poorly. And uh, rather than having a nice right angle and clearing the heat sink, uh, it gets pretty close to touching it. They could, of course, even punched out some uh, relief area onto the heat sink so that you wouldn't such a, get such a tight, uh, close connection. Uh, what else? Uh, the LEDs, you can see they have a bunch of heat sink around them because you need to sort of jot out a really large distance. Uh, just taking a look at this photograph here, you can see the reason why is that the holes for the case don't align up with the circuit board. So... Uh, I'm not quite sure how you could ever do that, but uh, that's what happened on this assembly. So, uh, first glance, tons of things you could actually improve with, uh, ironically, almost increasing no cost, but it would probably improve the reliability of an assembly. I must say that always baffles me sometimes with these really cheap products as to uh, why they don't do things that wouldn't cost money. In terms of the actual topology for the circuit, I just did a partial trace down. It looks pretty straightforward. Solar panel on one side, batteries on the other. Uh, here's the reverse blocking diodes down here. Uh, an in-channel MOSFET from uh, Max Power providing a presume the current limiting function, uh, the so-called fuse, which is that chunk of wire. Uh, if you look at the assembly, lots of uh, TO92 packages. Uh, there's two types of uh, parts here. There's the two parts called U1 and U2. They're uh, TL431s. Uh, those are basically uh, voltage references um, or adjustable zeners. The rest are uh, basic uh, jelly bean uh, PNP transistors. Um, looks like one of the uh, voltage references is monitoring the battery, that kind of makes sense. And then there's the other one looks like it's probably monitoring the solar panel, and that also makes sense. And then there's a bunch of decision logic I didn't trace through that actually then controls the MOSFET uh, so the battery is in the right charging mode. So, looks like a pretty straightforward topology. So the panel came with this uh, strange looking connector, I think they called it a J connector in the manual. And when you plug it in, of course, it mates the uh, contacts, uh, and that's fine. What kind of baffles me a little bit, though, is that there's still a gap here where you can actually see the metal. And uh, I presume that uh, that would eventually corrode if it was in a wet environment. don't know very much about solar panels. Not sure maybe these are the industry standard or maybe this is something uh, 
that's unique to this panel. I don't know if you're an expert, I wouldn't mind hearing from you, but uh, this connector looks like it wouldn't be very waterproof, and you have to take further steps to uh, make use of it. Oh, well, there we go. This is the Nature Power 8 amps charge controller. Um, I didn't show it, but I did plug it into a battery uh, that uh, was uh, just fine, actually, quite frankly. It charged the battery correctly. So uh, even though this, the workmanship of the actual assembly isn't so hot in my mind, uh, it certainly did at least work uh, out of the box.